Heads. 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 Heads, I win. Again. Heads. 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 Indicative of something besides the redistribution of wealth. Heads. A weaker man might be moved to re examine his faith. If in nothing else, at least in the law of probability. Heads. Consider. One. Probability is a factor which operates within natural forces. Two, probability is not operating as a factor. Three, we are now held within un, sub, or supernatural forces. Discuss. What? Look at it this way. If six monkeys... If six monkeys... The law of averages, if I've got this right, means that if six monkeys were thrown up in the air long enough, they would land on their tails. About as often as they would land on their... Heads. <clears throat> Getting a bit of a bore, isn't it? A bore? Well... What about the suspense? What suspense? It must be the law of diminishing returns. I feel the spell about to be broken. Well, 
an even chance. 78 in a row. A new record, I imagine. Is that what you imagine? A new record? Well, no questions, not a flicker of doubt. I could be wrong. No fear? Fear? Fear. 79. I think I have it. Time has stopped dead. The single experience of one coin being spun once has been repeated... 156 times. On the whole, doubtful. Or... A spectacular vindication of the principle that each individual coin spun individually is as likely to come down heads as tails and therefore should cause no surprise each individual time it does. Heads. I've never known anything like it. He's never known anything like it. But he has never known anything to write home about, therefore, it is nothing to write home about. What's the first thing you remember? Well, let's see. <clears throat> First thing that comes into my head, you mean? No. The first thing you remember. Ah. Oh. No. It's no good. It's gone. It's a long time ago. You don't get my meaning. What's the first thing after all the things you've forgotten? Oh, I see. Are you happy? What? Content. At ease. I suppose so. What are you going to do now? I don't know. What do you want to do? Look. What about it? Well. We have been spinning coins together since... I don't know when. And in all that time, if it is all that time, 157 coins spun consecutively have come down heads 157 consecutive times, and all you can do is play with your food. Wait a minute. There was a messenger. Brother Glenn! Get him downstairs! He was sent for. Another curious scientific phenomenon is the fact that the fingernails grow after death, as does the beard. What? Beard. But you're not dead. I didn't say they only started to grow after death. The fingernails also grow before birth. Though not the beard. What? Beard! What's the matter with you? The toenails, on the other hand, never grow at all. Toenails on the other foot never grow at all. No. Do you remember the first thing that happened today? Oh, I woke up, I suppose. I've got it now. That man. He woke us up. Messenger. That's it. Pale sky before dawn. A man standing on his saddle to bang on the shutters. But then he called our names. You remember? 
that man woke us up. We were sent for. That's why we're here. Traveling. A matter of extreme urgency. A royal summons is very words. Official business, no questions asked. Up we get and off at the gallop, fearful lest we come too late. Too late for what? How would I know? We haven't got there yet. I say. <laughs> Just in time. Why is that? Why, we grow rusty. And you catch us at the very point of decadence. This time tomorrow, we might have forgotten everything we ever knew. We'd be back where we started, improvising. Tumblers, are you? We can give you a tumble, if that's your taste, and times being what they are. Otherwise, for a jingle of coin, we can do you a selection of gory romances pirated from the Italian. And it doesn't take much to make a jingle. Even a single coin has music in it, should it be gold. Tragedians! At your command. My name is Guildenstern, and this is Rosencrantz. I'm sorry. His name is Guildenstern, and I'm Rosencrantz. We've played to bigger, but quality counts for something. Tragedians. What exactly do you do? Tragedy, sir. Deaths and disclosures, universal and particular. Denouement. Friends, the straight melodrama. We transport you back into a world of intrigue and illusion. Clowns, if you like. Ah! Murders. Ah! We can do you ghosts and battles. <laughs> it's on the skirmish level. <laughs> Heroes, villains, tormented lovers, set pieces in the poetic vein. We can do you rapiers or rape <laughs> or both. By all means, faithless wives and ravished virgins. Flagrante oh, oh. delicto, at a price for which there are special terms. It costs little to watch and little more to get caught up in the action, if that's your taste, and times being what they are. What are they? Indifferent. Bad. Wicked. See anything you like? A lucky thing we came along. For us. Also for you. For some, it is performance. For others, patronage. They are two sides of the same coin, or being as there are so many of us, the same side of two coins. It was luck, then. Or fate. Yours or ours. Could hardly be one without the other. 
fight that. You said caught up in the action. I did. I did. You're quicker than your friend. For a handful of coin, I happen to have a private and uncut performance of the rape of the Sabine women. Or rather, woman. Or rather, Alfred. And for eight, you can participate. It could have been... It didn't have to be obscene. I was prepared. But it's this, is it? No enigma, no dignity, nothing classical or poetic. Only this. A comic pornographer and a rabble of prostitutes. You should have caught us in better times. We were purists then. Excuse me. Alfred. You're not exclusively players, then. We are inclusively players, sir. <laughs> I had no idea. No. I mean, I've heard, but I've never actually seen. No. I mean, what exactly do you do? We keep to our usual stuff, more or less, only inside out. We do on stage the things that are supposed to happen off, which is a kind of integrity if you look on every exit as an entrance somewhere else. Wait a minute. What will you do for that? Do you know any good plays? Plays? Oh, yes. One of the Greeks, perhaps? You're familiar with the tragedies of antiquity, are you? The great homicidal classics, maidens aspiring to godheads, or vice versa? That's your kind of thing, is it? I can't say it is, really. Uh, we're more of the love, blood, and rhetoric school. Well, we can do you blood and love without the rhetoric, and we can do you blood and rhetoric without the love, and we can do you all three, concurrent or consecutive, but we can't give you love and rhetoric without the blood. Blood is compulsory. They're all blood, you see. Is that what people want? It's what we do. Do you like a bet? Double or nothing? Heads. Heads! Double or nothing. Come on. I say, that was lucky. It was tails. Welcome, dear Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Moreover, that we much did long to see you, the need we have to use you did provoke our hasty sending. 
Something have you heard of Hamlet's transformation? So call it. Sit nor the exterior nor the inward man resembles that it was. But it should be more than his father's death that thus hath put him so far from the understanding of himself. I cannot dream of. I entreat you both. But being of so young days brought up with him, and sith so neighbored to his youth and havior, that you vouchsafe your rest here in our court some little time, so by your companies to draw him on to pleasures, and to gather so much as from occasion you may glean, whether aught to us unknown afflicts him thus, that opened lies within our remedy. Good. Gentlemen, he hath much talked of you, and sure I am two men there are not living to whom he more adheres, if it will please you to show us so much gentry and goodwill as to extend your time with us a while, for the supply and profit of our hope. Your visitation shall receive such thanks as fits a king's remembrance. At both your majesty's might, by the sovereign power you have of us, put your dread pleasures more into command than to entreat. But we both obey, and here give up ourselves in the full bent to lay our service freely at your feet to be commanded. Thanks, Rosencrantz. And gentle Guildenstern. Thanks, Guildenstern. And gentle Rosencrantz. And I beseech you instantly to visit my too much changed son. Heaven make our presence and our practices pleasant and helpful to him. Aye. Amen. I want to go home. Don't let them confuse you. <laughs> We're in over our steps. Heading out of depth. Stepping out of our heads. <laughs> it's all heading to a dead stop! There! something nudges it into outline, it's like being ambushed by a grotesque. A man standing in his saddle in the half-lit, half-alive dawn banged on the shutters and called two names. When he called, we came. That much is certain. We came. Well, I can tell you, I'm sick to death of it. I don't care which one I am, so why don't you make up your mind? We didn't come all this way for a christening. But we have been comparatively fortunate. We might have been left to sift the whole field of human nomenclature like two blind men looting a bazaar for their own portraits. At least we are presented with alternatives. Well, as from now, my name is but not choice. Your smallest action sets up another somewhere else and set up a fight. I do think, or else this brain of mine hunts We're going round in circles. As I so sure as it hath used to do, that I have found the very cause of Hamnet's lunacy. Oh, speak of that. That do I long to hear. Give first admittance to the ambassadors. He tells me, my dear Gertrude, he hath found the head and source of all your son's distemper. I doubt it is no other but the main. His father's death and our o'er hasty marriage. Well, we shall sift him.
It's all right. There's a logic at work. It's all done for you. Don't worry. Enjoy it. Relax. Relax. We have been briefed. Have we? Hamlet's transformation. What do you recollect? Well, he's changed, isn't he? The exterior, inward man, fails to resemble. Draw him onto pleasures, glean what afflicts him. Something more than his father's death. He's always talking about us. There aren't two people living whom he dotes on more than us. We cheer him up, find out what's the matter. Exactly. It's just a matter of asking the right questions and giving away as little as we can. And then we can go and receive such thanks as fits a king's remembrance. Oh, I like the sound of that. What do you think she meant by remembrance? He doesn't forget his friends. Would you care to estimate? Some kings tend to be amnesiac, others the opposite, I suppose. Whatever that is. How much? Elephantine. How much? Retentive. He's a very retentive king. A royal retainer. What are you playing at? Words. Words. They're all we have to go on. Look at this. Leave things alone. This is interesting. You would think this would fall faster than this, wouldn't you? And you'd be absolutely right. Fancy a game? We're spectators. Do you want to play questions? Play that. You have to ask questions. Statement one, love. Cheating. How? Oh, I hadn't started yet. Statement two, love. Are you counting that? What? Are you counting that? Foul, no repetition. Three, love. Game. I'm not going to play if you're going to be like that. Who's serve? Uh, Hesitation, love one. Who's go? Why? Why not? What for? No! No synonyms! What all? What in God's name is going on? Foul, no rhetoric, 2-1. What does it all add up to? Can't you guess? Are you addressing me? 
Is there anyone else? Who? How would I know? Why do you ask? Are you serious? Was that rhetoric? No! Statement. <laughs> Two all game point. What's the matter with you today? When? What? Are you deaf? Am I dead? Yes or no? Is there a choice? Is there a god? Foul! No non sequiturs. Three, two, one, game all. What's your name? What's yours? You first. Statement. One love. What's your name when you're at home? What's yours? When I'm at home? Is it different at home? What home? Haven't you got one? Why do you ask? What are you driving at? What's your name? Repetition. Two love. Match point. Who do you think you are? Frederick! Game and match! 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 Instinctive. <laughs> now I try you. You're Not yet. Catch me unawares. Right. Gilders. No. Me. Unawares. Ready? Never mind. It remains, and the remainder thus upheld. I have a daughter, have while she is mine, who in her beauty and obedience mark hath given me this. Now, gather and surmise. To the celestial and my soul's idol, the most beautified Ophelia. That's an ill phrase, a vile phrase. Beautified is a vile. Thus, in her excellent white bosom, came this from the classmate to her. Good madam, stay a while, I will be faithful. Doubt thou that the stars are bright, doubt that the sun doth be. I perceive it. I must tell you that before my daughter told me, what might you or my dear majesty of Queen here think if I had played the desk or table or given dumb or looked upon this love with idle sight? What might you think? No, I went bound to work. And my young mistress, thus I did bespeak. Lord Hamlet is a prince out of thy star. This must not come in.
How does my good Lord Hamlet? Well, God have mercy. Do you know me, my lord? Excellent. Ah. Excellent well. Uh, you are a fishmonger. Not I, my lord. Then I would you were so honest a man. Honest, my lord. What do you read, my lord? Words. Words, words. What is the matter, my lord? Between who? I mean the matter that you read, my lord. Statement. Slanders, sir. Uh, for the satirical rogue says here that old men have grey beards, that their faces are wrinkled, their eyes purge. Who was that? Didn't you know him? He didn't know me. He didn't see you. I didn't see him. We shall see. I hardly knew him. He's changed. You could see that? Transformed. How do you know? Inside and out. I see. He's not himself, you know. He's changed. I could see that. Glean what afflicts him. Me? Him. How? Question and answer. He's afflicted. You question, I'll answer. He's not himself, you know. I'm him, you see. Who am I? You're yourself. And he's you? Not a bit of it. Are you afflicted? That's the idea. You ready? Let's go back a bit. I'm afflicted. I see. Glean what afflicts me. Right. Question and answer. How should I begin? Address me. My dear Guildenstern. You've forgotten, haven't you? My dear Rosencrantz. I don't think you quite understand. What we're attempting here is a hypothesis in which I answer for him while you ask me questions. Ah. Ready? You know what to do. What? Are you stupid? Pardon? Are you deaf? Did you speak? Not now. Stay. Not now! Now! Would you like a bite? No. <sighs> Thank you. Oh, you mean you pretend to be him, and I ask you questions. Very good. You had me confused. I could see I had. How should I begin? Address me. My honoured lord, my dear Rosencrantz. Am I pretending to be you, then? Certainly not. Well, if you like, shall we continue? My honoured lord, my dear fellow, how are you? Afflicted. Really? In what way? Transformed. Inside or out? Both. I see. <sighs> Not much new there. We'll go into detail! Delves! Probe the background. Establish the situation. So your uncle's the king of Denmark? That's right. And my father before him. His father before him? No, my father before him. But surely you may well ask. Let me get it straight. Your father was king, you were his only son, your father dies, you are of age, your uncle becomes king. Yes. Unusual. Undid me. Undeniably. He slipped in. Which reminds well, me. Well, it would. I don't want to be personal. Common. Your mother's marriage. He slipped in. 
His body was still warm. So was hers. Extraordinary. Indeed. Hasty. Suspicious. Makes you think. Don't think I haven't. And with her husband's brother. They were close. She went to him. Too close. For comfort. Looks bad. Adds up. Incest to adultery. Would you go so far? Never. To sum up. Your father, whom you love, dies. You were his heir. You come back to find that Harley was the corpse cold before his young brother popped onto his throne and into his sheets, thereby offending both legal and natural practice. Now, why exactly are you behaving in this extraordinary manner? I can't imagine. And yet we were sent for. Hmm. And we did come. Rosencrantz? What? Guildenstern. What? Don't you discriminate at all! What? Nothing. Look at this. Watch closely. Interesting. Will you walk out of the air, my lord? Into my grave? Indeed, that is out of the air. My honorable lord, I will most humbly take my leave of you. You cannot, sir, take from me anything that I will more willingly part with all, except my life. Except my life. Except my life. Fare you well, my lord. These tedious old fools. You go to seek the Lord Hamlet. There he is. What's he doing? Talking. To himself. My honoured lord. My most dear lord. My excellent good friends. How dost thou, Guildenstern? Ah, oh, Rosencrantz. Oh, oh, good lads. How do you both? As the indifferent children of the earth. Happy that we are not over happy on fortune's cap. We are not very button. Nor the soles of her shoes. Yes. Neither, my lord. Then you live about her waist or in the middle of her favours. Faith, her privates, we. In the secret parts of fortune. <laughs> ah, most oh. true. She is a strumpet. Of what news? None, my lord, but that the world's grown honest. Then is doomsday near. But your news is not true. Let me question more in particular. What have you, my good friends, deserved at the hands of fortune that she sends you to prison hither? Prison, my lord? Denmark's a prison. Then is the world one. A goodly one. In which there are many confines, wards, and dungeons, Denmark being one of the worst. We think not so, my lord. Why, then, tis none to you. For there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. To me, it is a prison. Why, then, your ambition makes it one. It is too narrow for your mind. Oh, God! I could be bounded in a nutshell and count myself a king of infinite space. Were it not that I have bad dreams? But in the beaten way of friendship, what make you at Elsinore? To visit you, my lord. No other occasion. Beggar that I am, I'm even poor in thanks. But I thank you. Were you not sent for? Is it your own inclining? Is it a free visitation? 
Well, come, come, nay, speak. What should we say, my lord? Why, anything but to the purpose. You were sent for, and there is a kind of confession in your looks which your modesties have not craft enough to colour. I know the good king and queen have sent for you. To what end, my lord? That you must teach me. Be even and direct with me whether you were sent for or no. My lord, we were sent for. Aha! I will tell you why. Anon he finds him, striking two short at Greeks. His antique sword, rebellious to his arm, lies where it falls, repugnant to command. I have of late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth, forgone all custom of exercises, and indeed, it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame, the earth, seems to me a sterile promontory. This most excellent canopy, the air, look to you. This brave o'erhanging firmament, this majestical roof fretted with golden fire. Why? It appeareth nothing to me but a foul and pestilent congregation of vapours. What piece of work is man? How noble in reason. How infinite in faculties. In form and moving, how express and admirable. In action, how like an angel. In apprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world. The paragon of animals. And yet, to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me, nor woman neither, though by your smiling you seem to say so. My lord, there was no such stuff in my thoughts. Why did you laugh then when I said man delights not me? And to think, my lord, if you delight not in man, what Lenten entertainment the players shall receive from you. We coated them on the way, and hither are they coming to offer you service. He that plays the king shall be welcome. Gentlemen, you are welcome to Elston. Oh, your hands. Come, then. You are welcome. But my uncle father and my aunt mother are deceived. In what, my dear lord? I am but mad north, northwest. Hmm. When the wind is southerly, I know a hawk from a handsaw. Well be with you, gentlemen. Hark you, Guildenstern, uh, and uh, you too, at each ear a hearer. That great baby you see there is not yet out of his swaddling clouts. I will prophesy he comes to tell me of the players. My lord, I have news to tell you. Uh, my lord, I have news to tell you. When Roscius was an actor in Rome... The actors are come hither, my lord. Buzz, buzz. Upon my honor. Then came each actor on his ass. The best actors in the world. Either for tragedy, comedy, history, pastoral, pastoral, comical, historical, pastoral, tragical, historical, tragical, comical, historical, pastoral. Hmm? Yes. What? I thought you. Ah.
say? Look at this. So we made some progress. You think so? I think we can say that. I think we can say he made us look ridiculous. Played it close to the chest, of course. Question and answer. He was scoring off two down the line. Caught us on the wrong foot once or twice, but I think we gained some ground. He murdered us. Might have had the edge. 27-3, and you think he might have had the edge? He murdered us. What about our evasions? Oh, our evasions were lovely. You were sent for, he says. My lord, we were sent for. Now, where'd I put myself? He had six rhetorics. It was question and answer, all right. And two repetitions. Twenty-seven questions he got out and answered three. I was waiting for you to delve. When's he gonna start delving, I asked myself. We got his symptoms, didn't we? Half of what he said meant something else, and the other half didn't mean anything at all. Thwarted ambition, a sense of grievance. That's my diagnosis. Six rhetorical and two repetition, leaving 19 of which we answered 15. And what did we get in return? He's depressed. Denmark's a prison, and he'd rather live in a nutshell. Some shadow play about the nature of ambition, and finally, one direct question which might have led somewhere, and led, in fact, to his illuminating claim to tell a hook from a handbag. And so, and so, when the wind is southerly. And the weather's clear. And when it isn't, he can't. Is at the mercy of the elements. Is that southerly? We came from roughly south. Which way is that? In the morning, the sun would be easterly. I think we can assume that, that it's morning. If it is, and the sun is over there, for instance, that would be northerly. On the other hand, if it's not morning and the sun is over there, that would still be northerly. To put it another way, if we came from down there and it's morning, the sun would be up there. But if it is actually over there and it's still morning, we must have come from back there. And if that's southerly and the sun is really over there, then it's the afternoon. However, if none of these is the case, why don't you go and have a look? Pragmatism. Is that all you have to offer? I merely suggest the position of the sun, if it is out, would give you a rough idea of the time. Alternatively, the clock, if it is going, would give you a rough idea of the position of the sun. I forget which you are trying to establish. I'm trying to establish the direction of the wind. There isn't any wind. Draft?
and Pyrrhus bleeding sword now falls on Priam. Out! Out, thou strumpet fortune! All you gods in general synod, take away her power! Break all the spokes and fellies from her wheel, and bowl the round knave down the hill of heaven, as low as to the fiends. This is too long. It shall to the barbers with your beard. Prithee, say on, he's for a speech or a tale of bawdry, or he sleeps. Say on, come to Hecuba. Seen the Moblet Queen. Moblet Queen. That's good. Moblet Queen is good. This is interesting. It is well. Uh, uh, good, my lord. Will you see the players well bestowed? Do you hear? Let them be well used, for they are the abstract and brief chronicles of the time. They deserve the more merit is in your bounty. Take them in. Follow him, friends. We'll hear <laughs> Can you play the murder of Gonzago? Aye, my lord. We'll have it tomorrow night. You could for a minute stop this speech of some dozen or sixteen lines which are accepted. Ah. Follow that law. And look you, mock him not. My good friends, I'll leave you till night. You are welcome to Elsinore. Good, my lord.
So, you've caught up. Not yet, sir. Now, mind your tongue, or we'll have it out and throw the rest of you away like a nightingale to Roman feast. Took the words out of my mouth. You'd be lost for words. You'd be tongue-tied. Like a mute in a monologue. Like a nightingale at a Roman feast. You left us. Yes, on the road. You don't understand the humiliation of it. To be tricked out of the single assumption that makes our existence bearable, that somebody is watching. We are actors. We're the opposite of people. So? We need an audience. We had an appointment. That is true. We know why you're here. We only know what we're told, and for all we know, it isn't even true. One acts on assumptions. What do you assume? Hamlet's not himself, outside or in. We have to glean what afflicts him. He's melancholy. Melancholy. Mad. How is he mad? Ah. How's he mad? More morose than mad, perhaps. Melancholy. Moody. He has moods. Of moroseness. Madness. And yet? Quite. For instance, he talks to himself, which might be madness if he didn't talk sense, which he does. Which suggests the opposite. Of what? I think I have it. A man talking sense to himself is no madder than a man talking nonsense not to himself. Or just as mad. Or just as mad. And he does both. So there you are. Stark raving saint. Why? Ah. Why? Exactly. Exactly what? Exactly why? Exactly why what? What? Why? Why what exactly? Why is he mad? I don't know. The old man thinks he's in love with his daughter. Good God. We're out of our depths here. No, no, no. He hasn't got a daughter. The old man thinks he's in love with his daughter. The old man is. Hamlet. In love. With the old man's daughter, the old man thinks. Oh. <laughs> it's beginning to make sense. Unrequited passion. Where are you going? I can come and go as I please. You know your way around. I've been here before. We're still finding our feet. I should concentrate on not losing your head. You speak from knowledge? Precedent. You've been here before. And I know which way the wind is blowing. This is a madhouse.
this play? No. A slaughterhouse. Eight corpses, all told. Six. Eight. What are they? They're dead. <laughs> <laughs> What do you know about death? Mechanics of cheap melodrama. Cheap melodrama? Doesn't bring death home to anyone. Not home to anyone. Shut up. Shut up. You can't do death. On the contrary, it's what we do best. We have to exploit whatever talent is given to us. And our talent is for dying. We can die heroically, comically, ironically, sadly, suddenly, slowly, disgustingly, charmingly, or from a great height. Audiences know what to expect, and that is all they are prepared to believe in. drift of confidence get from him why he puts on this confusion. He does confess it. He feels himself distracted. But from what cause he will by no means speak. <laughs> Did you assay him to any pastime? Madam, it so fell out that certain players we all brought on the way, of these we told him, and there did seem in him a kind of joy to hear of it. But they are here about the court this night to play before him. It is most true. And he beseeched me to entreat your majesties to hear and see the matter. Good gentlemen, give him a further edge and drive his purpose into these delights. We shall, my lord. Sweet Gertrude, leave us too. For we have closely sent for Hamlet hither, that he is to her by accident. We hear affront, Ophelia. Do you ever think of yourself as actually dead, lying in a box with a lid on it? No. Nope. Nor do I, really. Silly to be depressed by it. I mean, one thinks of it like being alive in a box. And one keeps forgetting to take into account the fact that one is dead. Which should make all the difference. Shouldn't it? I mean, you'd never know you're in a box, would you? It would be just like you were asleep in a box. Not that I'd like to sleep in a box, mind you. Not without any air. You'd wake up there for a start, and then where would you be? In a box. That's the bit I don't like, frankly. That's why I don't think of it. Because you'd be helpful. Wouldn't you? Stuffed in a box like that. I mean, you'd be in there forever. Even taking into account the fact that you're dead. It isn't a pleasant thought. Especially if you're dead, really. Ask yourself. 
If I asked you straight off, I'm going to stuff you in this box now. Would you rather be alive or dead? Naturally, you'll prefer to be alive. Life in a box is better than no life at all. I expect. You'd have a chance at least. You could lie there thinking, well, at least I'm not dead. In a minute, somebody's going to bang on the lid and tell me to come out. Hey, you! What's your name? Come out of there! I think I'm going to kill you. be all my sins remembered. I wouldn't think about it if I were you. You'd only get depressed. My lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have long and long to re-deliver. I pray you now receive them. No, not I. I never gave you aught. My honored lord, you know right well you did. And with them words of so sweet breath composed as made the things more rich. Whatever became of the moment when one first knew about death, there must have been one, a moment, in childhood, when it first occurred to you that you don't go on forever. Must have been shattering, stamped into one's memory. And yet, I can't remember it. It never occurred to me at all. We must be born with an intuition of mortality before we know the word for it, before we know that there are words. Out we come, blooded and squalling, with the knowledge that for all the points of the compass, there's only one direction, and time is its only measure.
What's the dumb show for? It's a device, really. <coughs> Makes the action that follows more or less comprehensible. You understand we are tied down to a language which makes up an obscurity what it lacks in style. Is this the murder of Gonzaga? Mm, that's the least of it. Who's that? The king's brother and uncle to the prince. Not exactly fraternal. Not exactly avuncular, as time goes on. to me. Love! His affections do not that way turn, <laughs> nor what he spake. Though it lacked form and little, was not like madness. And now, Ophelia, you need not tell us what Lord Hamlet said. We heard it all. There's something in his soul, oh, which his melancholy sits on brood. And I do doubt the hatch and the disclose will be some danger, which for to prevent I have with quick determination thus set it down. He shall with speed to England. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, it doesn't seem to be coming. We're not getting it at all. What did you think? What was I supposed to think? Wasn't that the end? You call that an ending? With practically everyone still on his feet? My goodness, no. Over your dead body. There's a design at work in all art. Surely you know that. Events must play themselves out to an aesthetic, moral, and logical conclusion. What's that in this case? It never varies. We aim for the point where everyone who is marked for death dies. Marked? Generally speaking, things have gone about as far as they can possibly go when things have got about as bad as they can reasonably get. Who decides? Decides. It is written. We are tragedians, you see. We follow directions. There is no choice involved. The bad end unhappily, the good unluckily. That is what tragedy means. Next! Having murdered his brother and wooed his widow, the poisoner mounts the throne. <laughs> Here we see him and his queen be drained to their unbridled passion. Enter Lucianus, nephew to the king. Usurped by his uncle and shattered by his mother's incestuous marriage, he loses his reason, throwing the court into turmoil and disarray, staggering from the suicidal to the merely idle. He has a plan to catch the conscience of the king.
freighted with false fire? How fares, my lord? Give all the play. Give me some light! Away! telling us what there's something they're not telling us speak with you and presently do you see yonder cloud that's almost in the shape of a camel by the mass and tis like a camel indeed methinks it is like a weasel it is back like a weasel or like a whale very like a whale then i will come to my mother by and by i will say so a by and by is easily said Leave me, friends. I like him not, nor stand it safe with us to let his madness range. Therefore, prepare you. I, your commission, forthwith will dispatch, and he to England shall along with you. Deed. Almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry with his brother. As kill a king? Aye, lady, it was my word. Thou wretched, rash, intruding fool. Farewell. Is that you? I don't know. It's you. We're not dead yet, then. Well, we're here, aren't we? Are we? I can't see a thing. Dark, isn't it? Not for night. No, not for night. It's dark for day. Oh, yes. It's dark for day. D. 
Do you think death could possibly be a boat? No, no, no. Death is not. Death isn't. Take my meaning? Death is the ultimate negative, not being. You can't not be on a boat. I've frequently not been on boats. No, no, what you've been is not on boats. I wish I was dead. I could jump over the side. That'd put a spoke in there, Will. Unless they're counting on it. I should remain on board. That'd put a spoke in there, Will. You all right? Yes. Fine. Would you like to come up now? All right, mate. Thank you. Try to be more careful. Oh, sorry. <sighs> nice bit of planking, that. Yes. Lovely bilges. Yes. Beautiful bottom. Yes, it? I'm very fond of boats myself. Like the weather contained. You don't have to worry about which way to go or whether to go at all. The question doesn't arise, does it? Because you're on a boat, aren't you? I think I'll spend the rest of my life on boats. Very healthy. One is free on a boat, for a time, relatively. I think I'm going to be sick. He's there. What's he doing? Sleeping. It's all right for him. What is? He can sleep. It's all right for him. He's got us now. He can sleep. It's all done for him. He's got us. We've got nothing. We've got nothing. Well, why don't you say something original? You don't take me up on anything. You just repeat everything I say in a different order. I can't think of anything original. I'm only good in support. I'm sick of making the running. There. It's all right. I'll see we're all right. But we've got nothing to go on. We're out on our own. We're on our way to England. We're taking Hamlet to the English king. What for? What for? Where have you been? Been. We've got a letter. You remember the letter. Do I? Everything is explained in the letter. Is that it, then? Why? Right. We take Hamlet to the English king, we hand over the letter. What then? That's it. We're finished. Who is the English king? That depends on when we get there. So we've got a letter which explains everything. You've got it. I thought you had it. I do have it. You have it. You've got it. I don't get it. You haven't got it. I just said that. I've got it. Oh, I've got it. Shut up. Right. What a shambles. We're just not getting anywhere. Not even England. And I don't believe it in any way. In what? England. Just a conspiracy of cartographers, you mean? I mean, I don't believe it. And even if it is true, the King of England won't know what we're talking about. What are we going to say? We say, Your Majesty, we have arrived. And who are you? Well, we are Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Never heard of you. Well, by nobody. What's your game? We have our instructions. First I've heard of it. Let me finish. We've come from Denmark. What do you want? Nothing. We're delivering Hamlet. Who's he? You've heard of him. Oh, I've heard of him, all right, and I want nothing to do with it. You march in here without so much as a your leave and expect me to take in every lunatic you try to pass off with a lot of unsubstantiated... We've got a letter. I see. <clears throat> I see. Well, this seems to support your story, such as it is. It is an exact command from the King of Denmark, for several different reasons, importing Denmark's health and England's too, that on the reading of this letter, without delay, I should have Hamlet's head cut off.
were his friends. How do you know? From our young days, brought up with him. You've only got their word for it. It's what we depend on. Well, yes. And then again... No. Let's keep things in proportion. Assume, if you like, they're going to kill him. Well, he is a man, he is mortal, death comes to us all, etc. And consequently, he would have died anyway, sooner or later. And then again, what's so terrible about death? As Socrates so philosophically put it, since we don't know what death is, it is illogical to fear it. It might be very nice. Or, to look at it another way, we are little men, we don't know the ins and outs of the matter. There are wheels, within wheels, etc. All in all, I think we'd be well advised to live well alone. It's awful. But it could have been worse. I was beginning to think it was.
Where's Hamlet? Gone. Gone where? The pirates took him. But they can't. We're supposed to be... We've got a letter which says... The whole thing's pointless without him. We need Hamlet for our release. I'll pretend to be... You pretend to be him, and... Right. I suppose we just go on. Go where? England? England. I don't believe it. Well, just a conspiracy of cartographers, you mean? I mean, I don't believe it. And even if it's true, what do we say? We say we've arrived. Who are you? We are Guildenstern and Rosencrantz. Which is which? Well, I'm Guildenstern and, and he's Rosencrantz. Exactly. What does this have to do with me? You turn up out of the blue with some cock and bull story? We, we have a letter. A letter? <laughs> As England is Denmark's faithful tributary, as love between them, like the palm, might flourish, etc., that on the knowing of this contents without delay of any kind, should those bearers, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, put to sudden death. Not that letter. Give him the other one. I haven't got another one. They're gone! It's all over! Where we went wrong, was getting on a boat. They had it in for us, didn't they? Right from the beginning. Who'd have thought we were so important? But why? Was it all for this? Who are we that so much should converge in our little deaths? You are Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. That is enough. No, it's not enough. To be told so little to such an end and still finally to be denied an explanation. In our experience, almost everything ends in death. Your experience? I'm talking about death. You've never experienced that. You die a thousand casual deaths and come back in a different hat. But nobody gets up after death. There's no applause. Only silence and some second-hand clothes. Oh, that's death! If we have a destiny, then so had he. And if this is ours, and that was his, and if there are no explanations for us, then let there be none for him. Oh, come, come, gentlemen. No flattery. He was merely competent. <laughs> you see, it is the kind you do believe in. It's what is expected. Deaths for all ages and occasions. That's it, then, is it? Done nothing wrong. Didn't harm anyone, did we? I can't remember. All right, then. I don't care. I've had enough. To tell you the truth, I'm relieved. There must have been a moment at the beginning where we could have said no. Somehow we missed it. Well, we're no better next time. Till then. The sight is dismal. 
and our affairs from England come too late. The ears are senseless that should give us hearing. To tell him his commandment is fulfilled. But Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. Mm -hmm.